I'd really like to do uh, one of these talks about Muslims. You know, actually, more and more, the longer we live here in the States, live here in Denver, Colorado, around just regular Americans that mostly aren't Muslim, I'm realizing my calling and my passion isn't Muslims. It's God. And uh, sometimes I can get those confused. I think, you know, I'm so into helping the Muslim world, and I love the Arab world, the Muslim world. I love the Middle East. But really what I'm called to do is uh, follow Jesus. I'm called to him. I'm not called to people. And so as I'm getting that straight in my head, you know, I, I sometimes forget. I actually don't think about any of my Muslim friends for a week or something, you know, at a time. And, and so I think, okay, well, there are some things about that part of the world that how to re relate to Muslims that I think are helpful. So um, I just wanted to mention a couple of those. A lot of, you guys, a lot of you guys that would be watching this probably have already read this book, um, Muslims, Christians, and Jesus. Uh, it actually talks a lot about the things I'm going to say right now. And then, of course, the, the new book that Ted and I wrote, Tea with Hezbollah, has been doing really well. It's been out for just a few weeks now, and it's a lot of fun. So these two books address some of these issues. And the thing I want to focus on here for just a couple minutes, because I just want to throw this thought out to you, is since the release particularly of Tea with Hezbollah, I've had quite a few Christian leaders um, question kind of the tactics that, that I'm using and that a group of our friends are, are using. I guess the tactic being uh, loving Muslims a little bit too much. Or, I mean, I, I'm trying to be fair. I'm not even sure. That, that probably doesn't say it the way they would say it, I'm sure. But because, of course, that's a setup to say it that way. I can't love Muslims too much. But uh, being soft, maybe being soft on Muslims. Maybe that's the way to say it, being soft on the Muslim world. And, and they want me to focus more on the evils of Islam and the evils of the Quran and the evils of Muhammad. You know, Muhammad was a bad guy. He, you know, committed wars and crimes, and he had lots of wives, and, and Islam conquered by the sword, and, and the Quran inc does encourage violence, and it does encourage killing the infidels, and, you know, it's, it's a bad book. It's not from God, so it's a bad book. And, frankly, my take over the years has been to ignore all of that. Maybe it's because I'm not smart enough to figure it all out. I, I don't know. Maybe I haven't studied enough. But I've read the Quran lots of times. I've studied the life of Muhammad. I've read tons of biographies about him. Uh, you know, lived with Muslims for 12 years in Beirut, but kind of been working with mo the Muslim world and Muslim people for 27, 28 years now. And uh, first of all, I haven't found that to be very true. I mean, I haven't actually found Muslims to be anything but really the greatest people. Uh, the, the, all the Muslims I know aren't like the Muslims these other guys are, are, are telling me about that I should be afraid of. And the Muslims are taking over the world, and maybe you've seen the YouTube video. Uh, it seems to have come to me maybe you know, 50 times now about you know, how Islam is expanding throughout Europe, and it's coming this direction. It's kind of like this fear-based, you know, they're out to get you kind of thing. I mean, I grew up with that with the Soviets. I remember growing up in Nebraska in the 70s, honestly think, thinking the Russians were coming. And um, I mean, my house wasn't full of fear at all. My parents were very godly and wonderful and not fearful people at all. So I don't know where I, I don't know where that came from. I just remember it kind of just, you, you just kind of, you, you knew it. You just knew the Russians were coming. Okay, well, they didn't come after all, but now the Muslims are coming. We're sure of that, and they're going to get us, and they're not good. So I think there's just this, maybe it's back to this idea that somehow we're attracted to bad news. Bad news makes news. And so fear is very powerful. Fear is a powerful motivator. And so the, the idea that Islam is evil, the Quran is evil, Muhammad's evil, therefore Muslims are caught in an evil system. People don't say Muslims are evil because that doesn't sound right, so they know that. But really, that's kind of what they're saying. Muslims aren't good and watch out for them. And by the way, before they get you, get them. And you, what, do you, what do you get them with? Well, you get them with this right here. You know, you, yeah, you can get them with the Bible. And that'll be good news. Well, funny thing is they don't feel as good news when you, when you have to get them before they get you. So we're just kind of going about loving people and, and presuming they love us. I've actually found when I walk into a new relationship, a new friendship, if I'm walking into that feeling like that person is going to like me and I'm going to like him, and I'm thinking already that person's a good guy, then it goes well. It's kind of, you know, it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. If I go into a relationship pretty convinced the person's a bad guy, I mean, sure you've done that. You've known neighbors or uh, your kid's, you know, baseball coach or whatever. Somebody that you thought, oh, this guy's a real turkey. I don't like this guy at all. 
and you talk to him, and it takes quite a while if, if it's not true, you know, if he's actually a nice guy, it takes a long time for you to reorient your mindset that he's okay. So I think, why don't we just, why don't we just love people and, and assume they love us? And why would we focus on, I mean, really, who cares uh, about, who cares what Muslims believe? I mean, I think it's important to know what a Muslim believes because you want to honor the Muslim. It's not important to know what a Muslim believes so that you can argue with a Muslim. We had two Mormon guys come around our house a while back, and, you know, you can always tell who they are because they have white shirts and a tie, and they're going house to house, and I happened to be home in the middle of the day and was actually talk, talking on the phone. And uh, they went to a house across the street, and I knew that the couple was home, and they didn't answer the door, and they came to my house, and I invited them in, and we had a great talk, actually. It's a fantastic story by itself. And later on, I saw this couple, and I said, hey, why didn't, why didn't you open the door? I knew that you were home. Why didn't you open the door when the, Muslims, uh, when, the, when the Mormons came by? And they said, oh, we don't know anything about Mormonism. And they were so serious. And I just said, what? You don't know anything about Mormonism? What is what does that have to do with it? And uh, these guys, these, they're believers. I mean, they love God. And I think we have this mindset that, we, that you have to know about the other person's religion, not because you want to honor and respect that person by knowing about them, but because we want to be able to, in an apologetic sort of way, argue them into the kingdom. Now, I don't know your success ratio on that. Maybe, maybe you're really good at that. Uh, but I've never been very good at arguing people out of their way of thinking into mine. So what if we just knew about people to respect them and to love them and honor them, and we focus on knowing Jesus, and we know nothing else. Like Paul says, I resolved to know nothing while I was among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. What if we knew nothing but Jesus? Would that be enough? Would it be enough with our Muslim friends, our Mormon friends, Jehovah Witness friends, uh, whatever, you know, your unbelieving friends? Let's not worry about them and what they're thinking, and is their agenda bad, and are they taking over the world? Let's just wildly and crazily, almost irresponsibly love them and see what happens. And then I think you'll see once again that the good news really is good news.